Sales is a con game. No, not like a con artist like Joe Mantegna's character in the classic movie House of Games. Although, yes, when we hear con game, we tend to think criminal activity. But con is actually the root of the word confidence. And confidence can be used by criminals to steal, of course. But confidence is also what makes good people attractive and salespeople successful. Sales is a con game. Now here are five actions that you can take to become more confident on sales calls, but also you'll be able to give customers confidence that they need to invest in you. I remember closing my first big deal with one of America's oldest brands. I couldn't believe it. This was my dream client and they were investing in our tiny little startup instead of bigger competitors. And the only reason that I won that business was confidence. The client told me directly, this was a risk for her personally and for her brand. But she was confident that my team and I would create success. You see, when you sell to somebody, you actually transfer your confidence from yourself onto the other person. And this one picked up on my confidence in what I was actually selling. And if you know anything about attraction, you know that there is nothing more attractive than a person who is confident in themselves. Confidence is what makes sellers attractive. So here are the five actions that you can take to become more confident and create confidence. Number one, be aware. Be aware of how the other person perceives low confidence. When speaking, avoid using words like just, as in, I'm just following up. Avoid words like, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Or maybe you always tend to thank people when they give you their time or when they connect with you on LinkedIn. Overthanking can actually lower your status in the eyes of people who you are attempting to woo. Think of it this way. It is perfectly fine to want the conversation or the sale, but certain words will make you sound like you need it, like you have lower status, lower confidence. And by the way, I've got a huge list of weak words to avoid. So if you'd like to have that, leave a comment below and I'm going to share that with you. Okay. Number two, mirror the status of the other person. So by avoiding certain words, you're going to avoid looking subservient. And instead, you're going to stand out and engage people who otherwise won't give you their time. So for example, is the person that you're flirting with hot? Then you need to be a hottie too. I'm serious. Act like a hottie and watch what happens. In business, it is exactly the same. Is the other person hard to reach? Then you should be hard to reach also. Mirror their status. Now, if you want to know how to practice this, stay with me. Number three, sell your soul or get the heck out of sales. Because if you can't confidently communicate the opportunity that you represent, you need to just quit and get out. Go sell a product that you genuinely believe in. We sell so that we can put bread on the table and pay the bills. That is true, but you've got to sell from your soul. You've got to genuinely believe in the positive outcome that your product or your service creates. You cannot fake this part. Number four, challenge people, poke the bear ask a question with shock value. So for example, ask a question that they should be asking themselves, but are avoiding asking themselves because they are afraid of hearing the answer. So here's a pro tip, make it a question that you cannot answer yourself. Like, hey, who benefits from keeping your situation the way that it is? Or how would you describe your ability to change? Number five, be disinterested. Now I know it sounds weird, but don't. don't say exactly what you mean. You need to tease a little bit. Let the implication underlying your words facilitate a little bit of curiosity. This is going to help you avoid looking desperate. Think of it this way, express what you want, but avoid looking needy. Sales trainer Tony Hughes calls this the law of principled disinterest. The best salespeople are not desperate, even if they are in dire straits. They project genuine curiosity. They radiate confidence and they never try to persuade. So instead, they help people who are open to change to convince themselves. It starts with getting people just a little bit curious using your confident tone. In fact, if I've made you a little curious in this video, I'll be happy to show you how to get started. You might consider subscribing to my newsletter or taking my complimentary curiosity crash course. Have a look down in the description below. You're going to see the links to both.
Alrighty, if you are new to the channel, my name is Jeff Molander and I study how the most successful persuaders tend to not persuade at all. So if you're open to my changing the way that you think about persuasion, social selling, and sales outreach on LinkedIn, consider hitting subscribe and leaving a comment down below, okay? It really helps the channel. Thanks guys. Alrighty, see you next time.